I hope I've intrigued you with this idea of sketchbook art. It's really such a rich platform for an artist to work on, and it can go in so many different directions. But you can start really simple. I started with just a, a rollerball pen and a basic moleskin sketchbook. But over time, I discovered that I wanted to add tone. So I bought one Tombow Cool Gray marker. And then I bought a second one. When I layered them, I had three different gray tones. And then I added warm grays, and then I added other colors. I went on a trip to Tuscany, so I bought a dark green to draw pine trees and some cream for the building and burnt orange for the tile roofs. And before long, I had this huge Ziploc bag with dozens and dozens of Tombow markers crammed into it. So I started to dabble in watercolor. Watercolor is even more flexible than the brush markers, and it's a lot more compact. I bought a, a Winsor Newton Field set. It's, it's small, it's portable, and it has a nice little palette in the lid. When you combine it with a, a Niji or a Pentel water brush, and, well, then you can watercolor anywhere. The water brush has a reservoir in the handle, so you don't even need a water jar. And I usually just wipe it off on my jeans or this old towel that I nicked from a pub in Wales. I've tried less expensive sets, but the investment in one Winsor Newton field set has lasted me for years. And you can always buy individual pans to pop in if you run out of a color, so it's easy to keep it fresh. I like to combine watercolor with colored pencil. You add a layer of colored pencil over a base wash and you get deep, rich textures and, and fields of color. Recently, I've been obsessed with ink tents from Derwent because the colors just pop. I also use Prismacolor and Winsor Newton color pencils too. Watercolor pencils are great. It's fun to just dip the end of the pencil in water for this creamy rich line. And you can also go over them with a water brush. Over the last few years, uh, I've also been painting in gouache, which is opaque watercolor. And I like Winsor Newton designer gouache and acrylic gouache by Holbein. I find a whole gouache set is a little bit cumbersome to carry around, so I tend to use that mainly at home. But if you pop one tube of white gouache into your bag, you can mix it with any other hue of watercolor and it makes it opaque, which is super handy. I go through so many little bottles of Dr. P.H. Martin's radiant concentrated watercolors. I love how vibrant those colors are. I also like Winsor Newton drawing inks for the most intense color bursts. You can use a brush or a dip pen with either one. They're not ideal for carrying around, but they're terrific in your home studio. I like fine liners to draw with, and I usually carry a number of different ones. I use um, different brands, different sizes, Sakura Pigma, Winsor Newton, Tombow Futnesuke, uh, Unipins, and Faber-Castell. There's just so many great pens to experiment. There are these fountain pens called Lamy Safari that are inexpensive and they have great nibs which you can easily switch out and they seem to last forever. I have a whole bunch of different ones. Some of them with refills and others with converters so I can add waterproof ink. I carry different colored ink in them. They're a lot of fun. Um, I buy Black Cat India ink by the quart and I use it with a brush dip pen. I also love Sumi ink, which is, I think it's a soft and warm. I love the color of it. I get it in liquid form, and I also get it in these beautiful sticks with gold decoration from Miyasutomo. Beautiful. Uh, I have white gel pens for highlights and such. I also have a lot of dip pens, which I use to draw and write with. My favorite is the G-Nib from Zebra. It's really flexible and it's a great nib for beginners too. And I use it with India ink primarily, but also other drawing and calligraphy inks from Windsor and Newton. I like a hint of collage now and then, so I always carry a small pair of blunt scissors and a glue stick to, so I can collage receipts and bus tickets and other ephemera into my sketchbook, particularly when I'm traveling. You can even draw or paint right over the ephemera for a cool effect. I tend to avoid a few different kinds of media because I really don't love how they work in a sketchbook. Pastels and charcoal, because they get all smudgy. 
And yeah, you could spray them with fixative, but I just can't be bothered and I don't like the smell. And alcohol-based markers, also because they bleed through most papers. But I know a lot of artists who aren't nearly as squeamish about these things. And there's also a book from Crescent called Render that I've tried that has paper that even Sharpie markers bleed through. So that's an alternative if you really like markers. So let's talk about sketchbooks themselves. The first question is size. I have pocket-sized ones, I have album-sized ones, but the ones that I use the most are the size of a, probably like a hardback novel, around five inches by eight inches. The next question is, will you use wet media? like watercolors and wash. In that case, you need a book that says watercolor paper or mixed media. If you'll only occasionally do watercolors, get the watercolor book anyway. It's perfectly fine to draw on with pencil or ink, but you don't want a watercolor on paper that's not meant for it. It's just, the colors are flat, it gets messy. I don't recommend it. Next, the binding. I've used spiral bound sketchbooks, which lie nice and flat and they have removable pages, but I never tear the pages out of my sketchbooks. That's a real no-no for me. So I tend to prefer perfect bound ones that look like real books. That's part of the fun of it. And I've filled dozens of moleskin, moleskine or moleskin, moleskin, I'm not sure. I've filled dozens of their watercolor notebooks in all sizes, from pocket size to the big gigantic ones that are kind of crazy. I also love the Venezia by Fabriano, and I like toned books, books with toned paper, like the Strathmore 400 series and the Gray and the Cappuccino from Hanamuba. I think it's always worth getting a good quality sketchbook because you're gonna work in it for several months. You're gonna make really beautiful art in it and you'll hopefully keep it forever once you've filled it up. And so the couple of dollars that you saved, you're soon gonna forget about those. But if you don't love the features and the size and the material and the quality of the paper of the book, you won't use it. So that's just money wasted anyway. Your work deserves good quality, right? So get what you need. Oh, and flip side, don't be intimidated by a new sketchbook, even if it costs $20 or more. If the very first empty page gives you blank page fever, just crack it open anywhere, any page, and do one drawing to break it in. Then you can go from there because no sketchbook is too good to draw in. Oh, and don't forget to put your name and maybe your email on the first page. There's nothing more heartbreaking than losing a half-filled sketchbook. Believe me, it's happened to me. Many sketchbook artists also are urban sketchers. So we go on location. We carry a backpack with our supplies and a folding stool. So It's so handy to just let you plonk down anywhere to draw. Make sure you have water and a snack and some sun protection too. Yes, mom. But don't go overboard with all your gear. We're, we're artists, we're not pack animals. It's tempting to get lots of gear, but you can also be a minimalist. Like I have a super trimmed down setup too. A small moleskin book, same size as my phone, a pen, a water brush, and a teeny paint set that I made myself. The whole studio can fit into one pocket of my jeans and I'm ready to go. Sketchbook art is so diverse and it's such fun to create. Your sketchbook is quickly gonna become your journal, your oratory, your playground, and your constant companion. Jump in and have fun.